by spending $16 billion and four decades, India has still not achieved anything incredible in its effort to build a national pride aircraft, the Tejas. A jet that New Delhi once believed would not only strengthen the Indian Air Force, but also become a global export star. But with prolonged delays, technical issues, and now the recent crash at the UAE air show, a big question shakes the whole story. How did India's dream jet turn into a nightmare? The Tejas program began in the 1980s, when India wanted its own modern light fighter to replace old MiG-21. Throughout the 1990s, research and planning moved painfully slowly. In the early 2000s, the first prototype struggled with technical faults, redesigns and repeated testing failures. Year after year, new deadlines were announced and missed. After decades of trials, upgrades and bureaucratic delays, Tejas finally entered service with the Indian Air Force in 2016. But even then, it was only a limited version, still needing improvements before it could match global standards. Even after 40 years, India has inducted only around 40-plus Tejas jets. This is a tiny number compared to what India had originally planned. On paper, the vision was massive. Build over 300 Tejas aircraft, upgrade them into advanced MK-1A and MK-2 versions, and then export them worldwide to earn money and strengthen the local defense industry. Meanwhile, the IAF is facing a serious shortage of fighter squadrons, so the failure or delay of this project hurts even more. So what's wrong with the Tejas? Tejas is a light fighter meant for quick, short missions. It has a modern cockpit, good agility, and a small radar signature. But it also has an underpowered engine, a basic radar, and a limited aviation suite. The worst part is that it has a very short combat range, only 500 to 700 kilometers, and a small payload capacity of just 3.5 to 4 tons. In comparison, the Su-30 MKI and Rafale have nearly double the combat range and payload capacity of the Tejas. Another major issue is that India heavily relies on foreign parts to build the Tejas. This includes the engine, radar, warfare suite and other critical components from different countries, which often causes significant delays due to geopolitical constraints and high costs. The Tejas Mark 1A, which is currently under production and delivery, comes with an improved AESA radar and better avionics, but it still uses the same underperforming engine. Although the Mark 1A's range is slightly improved thanks to mid-air refueling, this improvement is not due to any engine upgrade. The upcoming Tejas Mark II is expected to be a much better and more capable version, but it is unlikely to be available for service before 2030. At the same time, India's rivals would be flying 5th and 6th generation aircraft. So why is Tejas turning into a headache for India? Its endless delays meant the project took four decades, making it outdated by the time it entered service. Despite being a light fighter, Tejas MK-1A costs almost $70 million per unit, which is shockingly close to India's heavy fighter Su-30 MKI, which gives far more range, weapons and combat power. The manufacturer, HAL, cannot produce Tejas jets fast enough to meet the Indian Air Force's requirements. The target set on paper, building hundreds of jets within a certain period, are far from reality. Production delays, complex manufacturing processes, dependence on foreign parts, and limited factory capacity have all slowed the program. As a result, the number of jets delivered is far below the original targets, leaving the IAF with a shortage of fighters. Pilots have frequently raised concerns about the Tejas, 
One major issue is the difficulty of maintenance. The jet requires specialized equipment and skilled personnel, which makes keeping it operational more complicated than expected. The unreliability and incompatibility of the Tejas have put it at a disadvantage in the Indian fleet. That is why India did not deploy it in any operations during the 2025 air clashes with Pakistan, meaning it has not yet been battle-tested. Its unreliability, combined with its limited range and payload, allowing it to carry fewer weapons and less fuel over a shorter distance compared to other fighters, restricts its effectiveness in long or heavy combat missions. Despite all this, four countries, including Egypt and Brazil, have shown interest in buying the Tejas. However, the recent crash outside India during an international air show has shaken confidence in India's ability to earn revenue from exports and develop the local defense industry. Many are now asking, if it struggles during peacetime displays, how will it perform in real combat? Tejas was supposed to be India's pride, a symbol of self-reliance, export success, and a solution to the IAF's shrinking fleet. But none of these goals have been achieved by Tejas. This is a harsh reality.